Today, we're going to teach you how to protect your hard drive and protect your data on your hard don't do that. So this video was brought to you by QNAT. They basically wanted me to talk about their TVS 472 XT NAS. And frankly, the truth is, I, I can't really do too much interesting stuff about a NAS video because I'm not a server expert. I don't have the testing equipment. And also, I don't think my audience really that interested in NASs anyway. But this is a very interesting NAS. It's very similar to the smaller one that I checked out in the past, which is like a small four drive NAS. It's also four bays, but it's more prosumer oriented and it has more ports more powerful processors, supports up to 64 gigs of RAM. This has 10 gigabit ethernet as well. And it also has Thunderbolt, which is very, very important, especially for people who are working, you know, from Macs or something like that. Allows for very fast data transfer, which is very convenient and very, very nice. So this is a very nice NAS. But the thing is, I can't make a 10 minute or eight or six or however long this video is, video about a NAS, which is just a bigger, more advanced rather of a NAS that I've reviewed before. I've checked out QNAP systems and I've already shown how good their software is. So we're gonna be talking about how you can protect your hard drive. And starting off with number one is don't drop it like me, which I did in the intro just to entertain you. This is a dead drive, obviously. I didn't, well, I did drop it on purpose, but I didn't break a drive just for the video. This hard drive was killed by my unfortunately now deceased cat back in like 2018. And I, cause, cause I was a stupid idiot. He was in my room and this hard drive was on the edge of a desk. So of course my cat was gonna push it down. It's just a cat thing. Well, RIP Taro, he was a very cute cat and I will forever ever miss him, but he did kill this hard, hard drive, which is one of his uh, biggest top highlights, I guess, of having him in my life. So yeah, number one, don't drop it. So the reason for this is real simple. Hard drives are very precisely engineered things with moving parts in them. It's a moving disc with a reader on top, just like a CD, just like a vinyl, but more advanced and at a much tinier molecular nanoscale so that, you know, you can fit more data on this drive than your average disc can ever do. So because of that, because it's so precision engineered, when you hit it, with a shock and it gets knocked. Things inside get knocked out of position and your the reader might be knocked out of position, your drive might be knocked out of position, things might crack, things might break because of there's so many fragile, intricate moving parts in here. They break easily so you should never drop them. And when it's running and you drop them, I'm willing to bet that hard drive will lose all its data or at least it will be pretty broken. Number two is temperature. Protect your hard drive, keep it in a cool, dry place. You don't want humidity to get in there because that will ruin the moving parts. It's very intricate, remember? You don't want heat to ruin the parts, you don't want excessive cold to ruin the parts. Hard drives are like the picky Goldilocks of computer parts. Most of the computer parts will only have problems once it gets too hot. If you run them in very cold conditions, but you prevent condensation, they generally will run really well. Like your CPU can run at negative 100 degrees Celsius. People do sub-zero uh, cooling for that reason. So your CPU or GPU can run at very cool temperatures and have no real issues. But on the other hand, this, this will cause issues if you get it too cold or get it too hot. So in general, you don't want it to be in extreme temperatures to protect your hard drive and protect your data that is on your hard drive. These are Goldilocks, man. They are fickle and they want the perfect balance. Number three, it's vibrations. Now, companies, WD, CK, all these companies spend so much money every year developing technologies, researching because they want their hard drives to survive vibrations, especially those designed for servers. That's why server hard drives are so much more expensive than your average hard drive because, well, they're designed to survive the amount of vibration that you get in a server. Why is there so much vibration in a server? Well, because when you have many vibrations, vibrating hard drives next to each other, the vibrations add up, they resonate, and they will affect each other. And these fancy server hard drives have built in fail saves and mechanisms to prevent this from happening, and that is important. You don't want this to be besides strong sources of vibration or movement in general. You don't want it to be shaking. You don't want it to be moving it about as much as possible. That Yes, you might have to put it in your backpack, but try to secure it so it doesn't flop around and fly around your backpack. So yeah, we, I can play hits or tails with this hard drive. You wanna play hits or tails? But yeah, you get the idea here. You don't don't want too much movement because you're gonna break something and lose your data. The next step is to not suddenly kill power, not suddenly disconnect your hard drive when you are writing data or reading data off of it. Now, generally, if it's kind of like idling and you just unplug it without safely ejecting in Windows or something, you'll be fine, actually. You'll generally be quite okay. You won't lose data. Things will generally be quite all right. But if it's halfway through reading, halfway through writing some data, your hard drive will face some issues. You might have to format it. You might have to reset it or it might just straight up break. If you suddenly unplug, kill the power, kill the connection, 
to your hard drive in say a USB enclosure or even just through normal SATA because well hard drives are fragile moving parts just think about it. when you are writing data or reading data from your hard drive that disk in there it's just spinning right it's it's spinning at like thousands of RPM but when you cut the power you suddenly kill that disk it's suddenly you know it, there will be momentum in the disk and it continues spinning but the, the wire the control centers they're not powered up basically it's running how it's not supposed to right it's operating in a way that it was never intended to and when you have something that is so intricately engineered with fine precise margins that is a recipe for disaster a recipe for failure you don't want that to happen to you you're gonna lose data so and finally last but not least to protect your data more so than your hard drive it's to back up your stuff. If you don't back up your stuff, you're gonna lose something and you don't come crying to me when you lose your precious pictures of that dog that you had, all right? Don't cry to me when you lose pictures of your girlfriend, all right? Back up your data. And that's where things like this QNAP NAS comes in. A NAS is a network attached storage, so it's kind of like a server. It will auto back up for you. It will, you can store things in RAID, for example, in RAID 10 and things like that, so that you can end up basically having what is called backup. The key to protecting your data is redundancy and that's what things like this QNAP server provide which is to back things up for you. When you store something on a server that's properly engineered and designed and you run it in say RAID 1, you will basically store data onto your hard drive to times. You store data to two different hard drives. The way it works is simply this. If a hard drive's probability of failure is 10%, which is much higher than actual fact, right? If you have data stored to two hard drives, the probability both hard drives fail and you lose all your data will drop from 10% to 1%. Now take this into the real world where hard drive failure rates are much lower than that, more like 1% in the average consumer use case. Then in that use case, what ends up happening is, well, 1% times 1% is going to give you 0.0 zero 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 one percent I can't do math on the fly right now I haven't done math in a very long time but you get the idea the possibility that you lose data with both hard drives failing is much lower if you save it to two hard drives than just one hard drive. So redundancy is your best friend in ensuring your data doesn't get lost. And that's where something like a QNAP server comes in. This is a NAS and what you can do is you can set it up to be in RAID 1 and you can store data into two hard drives at once and make sure that things are backed up. Of course, this means you lose half your storage but it's better to have less storage, pay more for hard drives and never lose a single bit of data than to, well, lose data like I did with this hard drive when my cat pushed it off the table. Um, on top of that, this NAS has other features as well. Of course, the hard drives generally are quite slow, especially if you're running them only in RAID 1. So this has the ability to use an SSD as a cache. And what that basically means is you can use SSD kind of as a, a RAM or a quick access memory slot, just a, a quick chest of drawers for the most access data. Intel Core i3 processor, which is nice. It's got the port for Thunderbolt. It comes with a PCIe card inside. So yeah, this is the QNAP TVS 472 XT. It's really nice. It's got Thunderbolt. It's got support for PCIe Gen 3 cards. You can put up to 64 gigs of RAM in here. It's got an Intel Core i3 processor, which is nice. It's got 10 gigabit Ethernet. I mean, it's a NAS. QNAP NAS. Check it out, I guess. Obviously sponsored. Yeah. See ya. Also, this is going to be like the third last video I've ever uploaded on this channel. I'll see you guys around. So that's it for this video. Don't subscribe if you don't subscribe because this is like the third last video. After three more videos, I'm, I'm done with this channel. So yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye.